Hey everybody, we're going to do a little experiment. I've told you about super glue and baking soda and how it works. I don't know how it works, but it works. And I've watched another video where you take super glue and ashes from a cigarette and it works and it works even better. What I found out is when you apply the materials, the hotter it gets, the better it works. Well, I have a antique cuckoo clock hand here that's busted and I've ordered a fixing to order another one from uh, Justin Barron who's going to make me one. Uh, but in the meantime, this will fit on the clock. So if you have a hand that's broken and you want a temporary fix until you order some more, I fixed a hand a year or so ago and it still works. These are Fisher Price baby wipes. I just who oh, happen to have one right here. So I'm going to add I'm going to put this together as well as I can put it together. And then I'm going to add the super glue to it. And then I'm going to put the baby wipe on top of it. But I'm dealing with such a small hand, so it's kind of hard to do. Don't want to stay in place. Let me get some tape out and tape it to my desk so it'll stay in place so I can glue this thing together. Again, It's a temporary fix, depending on the clock, it could be a permanent fix. Add the super glue. My super glue is stuck. Add the super glue and then add this material. And with me touching it, it is extremely hot. And hopefully I could turn it around to do the other side without breaking things. Sometimes when you do things on camera, everything goes wrong. So, again, adding the super glue to this side, and then <clears throat> folding this stuff over to meet that super glue. Now, I, I got too big of a piece, but...
afterwards you just apply the super glue to the cloth and again I have too big of a piece And this, for whatever reason, is not working. Well, let me just show you this bone hand that I did. Here you can see the cloth. I started off with baking soda and super glue. It worked, but it wasn't strong enough. I could break it in half. I then went to super glue and cigarette ashes. Again, it worked, but it wasn't strong enough. And then I added that cloth material. And here I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on it. You could see it flexing, but it's not breaking in half. And that is this crap right here is this cloth, is this baby wipe. And like I said, when I put it on there, it got extremely hot. I watched a YouTube video where a person put, and I guess it depends on what you're working on, where a guy put a uh, super glue and cigarette ashes on. He had a plastic piece that had broken, like a bowl, such as this. And he had a plastic piece that had broken, and he um, tried super glue and baking soda, and it worked, but he snapped it in half. And then he used super glue and cigarette ashes and he flexed it and it didn't snap in half. He did the same thing with wood, but he said that it gets hot. Well, super glue and cigarette ashes does get hot, but super glue and this wipe gets super glue to that piece of cloth. If I can get that piece of cloth to quit sticking to me. My super glue got hard again. Well, there it comes. It's coming out. Ah. It's sticking to everything except for where I want to stick it. It's not going to be the prettiest, but like I said, this is for a temporary fix. And if you use fresh materials, I was using this used piece of cloth here and it got all black from my hands. And uh, I wanna touch bases on, I had one person comment saying, you know, your hands are dirty. You need to wash them before you do these videos because it distracts away from the video. It's probably true. However, I was told by doctors that I cannot wash my hands like normal people do as often as normal people, I was, uh, I was exposed to some chemical weapons. I inspected some empty munitions containers while stationed over in England. These containers came from Mildenhall uh, Royal Air Force Base. 
they were part of the Gulf War. I used uh, gloves. The gloves would break. Anyway, I was exposed to chemical munitions from the Gulf War, from these containers, and because of that, my hands broke out where they dry up, especially in the winter time. My hands, my elbows, I don't know if you can see my elbow here, my knees, they all dry up and they will bleed because they get so dry. And I was told by some doctors not to wash my hands as often as other people do. So I apologize if people have issues with my hands being dirty, but now you know why. And as you can see, I'm flexing this. And it is not bending. It's not breaking at that crack. Does it look like crap? Yeah, kind of. But like I said, this is only a temporary fix. And you can, you can uh, sand some of it off. You can paint it, touch it up, whatever. And... Um, like I said, I got one clock that I did this with super glue and baking soda a couple years ago or a year ago, and that same hand is still on that clock. So it does work. Now, if you, when you set your hands, if you're rotating your hands out here, these hands are, most of them are made of plastic. You could break them. When you set your hands, you need to grab it at the base to set the hands and turn it that way. You shouldn't be turning your hands out here because you will damage your hands. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button because it's free to do so. Uh, leave me some comments, negative, positive, I don't care. I'll try to answer them, but if they're so negative that you make me mad, I might just delete the comment. Um, you know, I do this for free. I've never charged anybody one dime to answer their questions. I don't have my YouTube video set up to where you could pay a subscription. I've always told you that my services will be free and they will continue to be free so um i hope y'all enjoyed this video show me some love hit that subscribe button leave me some comments hit the like button and may god bless each and every one of you and as you can see i always Love these shirts. This is my 1880 Alexander Fleeg clock. That is the biggest cuckoo clock that I have. And it is a shirt designed with my inputs by Seth Linkfelter. It says, not for sale. It's my children's inheritance. What better way to show the love for your passion to advertise your passion I get people commenting on my shirt shirts all the time so uh, get with Seth Linkfelter let him design you a shirt from one of his uh, uh, sorry from one of your clocks that you love uh, you could buy this shirt and many other shirts on Redbubble. And I will leave a link in the description of this video. And leave a link to Seth's YouTube channel at the end of this video. If you do nothing else, uh, please hit the subscribe button to his YouTube channel. 
he is very professional. I wish my videos were as professional as Seth's videos. He doesn't put as many videos out as I do. And that's because he takes the time to edit, to create professional videos. He gives you the history of, of the clocks, as much history as he knows and can find. But his videos are extremely professional. So make sure you hit the subscribe button to his YouTube channel. If you do, if you even if you don't order a shirt or have Seth design you a shirt, at least hit the subscribe button. And may God bless each and every one of you. And as you can see, the hand is on. It's, like I said, I'm getting one made by Justin Barron, a bone hand for the clock. Because it is my biggest cuckoo clock. It was made by Alexander Fleeg. And there's not a lot of information on Alexander Fleeg. Uh, per my group expert, he was in business from 19, sorry, from 1869 to about 1910. Um, reading over his information again. This clock was made about 1900, um, between 1880 and 1900. And I don't care. It's huge. I love it. There's a tapered pin that goes on the end of this clock. I was reviewing my video when I first bought this clock, and the minute hand was not broken what happened as I was carrying this clock in my house the minute hand fell off because a tapered pen was not there or if it was there it fell out and so I didn't have a hand for a while a couple of weeks ago I dropped my lighter in my parking lot I went down to get my lighter and lo and behold there was the hand but it was broken and this part is broken off the material that I use is a perfect no can you get by with it yes and as I was telling you, you shouldn't turn your hands like this. You should turn your hands like this. And I have to uh, take this movement back out because you hear this clicking noise. Listen for it. It is... Uh, The part that comes off the tabs on the center arbor, I believe it has gotten bent, and that's why you hear are hearing this clicking noise. But this clock is so doggone big and fragile. Um, Steve Fowler did a terrific job in repairing this clock. But during that time frame, he had some health issues. And so um, when I got the clock back from him, I went ahead and uh, looked over the clock and there were some things that he could not connect together. So I use super glue and baking soda, connected them together, colored them in, and you would have to have on really good magnifying glasses to find out where I repaired this clock. 
but uh, it's it's so huge that I'm afraid to work on it. I I don't want to. It's so fragile, so it's not going to be one of these things where I'm going to work on after I've been working on other things all day and my back is hurting again but that's part of my life anyway uh some of those clocks down there i put in beat but all the other clocks i had i didn't feel like messing with them but uh it, i'm getting there i still got some more clocks to hang up um I still tell myself one day I'm going to build a false wall. And when I mean a false wall, I mean a wall on wheels that would say I could put right here in this entryway to the uh, pool table. I could put a wall right here on wheels, you know, going maybe leaving a walkway here but i could put this wall on wheels and hang clocks on both sides of this wall and because it's on wheels i can move it around wherever i want to move it and so i really think it's doable if you have a lot of clocks in your house or if you have a lot of clocks in your business and your business might be part of your house, a, a roll around wall like that would be very good to display clocks on for your, for your customers to look at. And that way you can roll it around during the daytime and put it away at night or whatever the case might be. But anyway, You can repair your broken hands. And if you were to take time, you know, I could put this in T and it will color it back to where, or copy, and it will color it back to where it was originally colored. But uh, I'm, I'm ordering a set of hands from Justin. So, uh, but other clocks, I've done this to, and it works. I don't care what people say. I've got hands in a drawer, but as many clocks that I have in my house, I would run out of those hands in those drawers. And parts can be expensive if you are just a collector. I order from Time Savers once or twice a year. Uh, most of the time it's once a year. If I was doing this for a living, yeah, I'd order stuff from, from them all the time and I wouldn't care about running out of parts because I would order things from them all the time, but I don't. I just do this for myself. So for the people who might give me a hard time about repairing hands, that's why I do it. It's my clocks, and I will do what I want. With your clocks, you do what you want. Again, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and may God bless each and every one of you. And, you know, I showed my house before. I have several clocks all over the place. And uh, when I was painting my kitchen, I put clocks in here. I hung clocks in here. This one got out of shape for some reason. But I hung clocks in here. I got them on my bed. My daughter came over to stay the night, but because my clocks were, my bed was full of clocks, she slept on the couch instead. 
But anyway, I've, I've got clocks all over the place. As you can see, and I work on my clocks. There's only been two occasions when I hired somebody to work on my clocks. That's because I was too busy. And I've got clocks right there to work on. I've got clocks all over the place to work on. I've got this uh, eight-day Oompa clock that I took mine apart to fix my friend's clock. I still haven't got back to fixing my clock. There's just not enough time in the day for me with my health issues.